All right, this is the CDC Golden Stone. Um, this is the fly that is on the cover of the Tying Nymphs book. And uh, this one is tied on a 5262. We're going to tie a size 10. Uh, so this is a TMCO 5262, which is a two extra long, two extra heavy nymph hook. And I've got a uh, 1 8 inch gold tungsten bead on there. Uh, now you can size that bead up or down depending on how heavy you want the fly to be. That's totally up to you. And I've got some 20 thousandths lead wire here. And I've just broken off a piece. And I'm going to wrap this starting at the back. I'm going to hold on to the tag end. And I'm going to make about a dozen turns. Like so. And then I'll use my fingernail to break the end off. And the front end I'll just pull hard on until it breaks off. And then I'll slide those lead wraps back up into the back of the bead. And you can see that centers the bead a little bit better on the hook and adds some additional weight. It also fills that, fills that void in the back of the, of the back of the bead. Now I'm going to come in with some, this is Danville 6 uh in yellow. Uh, UTC 70 would work fine here. Um, you got plenty of room for the thread work so we don't need anything particularly small. And I'm going to start this thread behind the lead and trim my tag end out. And now I'm going to start to build a thread dam. So this thread dam is going to go from bare shank up to the diameter of the lead. And I want to fill this in. You can see by directing those thread wraps, I can't just make a big lump there because it'll fall down. But by directing those thread wraps, I can jam them right up against the back of the lead wraps. And that's going to hold those lead wraps in place um, as well as sort of finish off the taper for, so we don't have a big step between the lead and the bare hook. Once I've got that, I'm going to wrap the thread up over the lead and back again. All the way back to the bend of the hook. And on this hook, when your thread's hanging at the bend, you can see it's hanging just about even. Let me go one more turn there. Just about even with the point on the barb. That's how we can tell we're at the bend on this one. Now for the tail, I'm going to use, this is ring neck pheasant tail fibers, and these are dyed yellow. And I'm going to take a fairly heavy clump of these. I've probably got 12 or 15 of these. And I'm going to pull them out at a right angle to the stem so that their tips become even. And I'll peel them off the stem. Kind of fold them up into a bundle. And I'm going to measure these about a half a shank. About a half shank long. I'm going to tie these in at the bend, right up on top of the bend of the hook, a little narrow band of thread, like so. Now I'm going to use these butt ends to sort of smooth off the rest of that taper. So I'll just spiral wrap forward to a couple eye lengths short of the bead, and then trim those out. And you can see how that's just smoothed the top surface of the hook, um, so we don't have anything to contend with there. Now the ribbing is going to be 3x monofilament. This is just tippet material, nothing special. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to lay it against the far side of the hook. And as I set that in there, you can see I'll come around and I'll catch it with a couple of turns. And then I can draw it down to length. Um, you just want to pull it down so that it's darn near flush with those thread wraps. Sometimes you pull it out, just do it again. And I'm going to wrap back over it, keeping it along the far side of the hook, all the way back to the base of the tail. And then I'll bring my thread back up to about where the lead starts. So that is tied in along that near side or far side. Um, and I'll explain why on the far side here in a minute. Now the shell back on this fly is Mirage Tinsel, but in this case on this big fly I'm going to use large. So this is large opal Mirage Tinsel. And I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to set it up on its edge up here on top of the lead um, as I move toward the front. I don't want to tie it in just at the bend. And I'm going to bring my thread over it and my thread will roll it flat across the top of the fly. And I'll just get just a couple turns on it. And then I want to make sure that it's centered on top. And I've got to do this a little bit more where I can see it. Where it's centered on top of the hook. And you can see how that's square right down the center of the back of the fly. Once I'm happy with that positioning, I can wrap back over it. And what I want to try to do with the thread wraps here is let it buckle the flash around the hook. All the way back to the base of the tail. I'll anchor it with a few tight turns. 
I want to pull that up and make sure there's no space in between the flash and the tail. Now we're going to build the abdomen. The abdomen is uh, what I've been using is this tannish yellow um, trout hunter dubbing. It's their caddis emerger nymph dubbing. But any sort of coarse dubbing will work for this application. Um, this is a nice golden stone color. And I don't need a ton of it. You can see I've got a lot of bulk between the lead and the pheasant tail and, and the, the mono rib and the flash already tied in. I've got a fair amount of bulk already on the hook, so I don't need to create a lot of bulk here, but I do want to cover this. So I'm going to dub this thread fairly tightly and, and a relatively thin strand for a fly as big as this is. I'm going to dub that down all tight. I'm going to use that bare thread between the dubbing and the hook to work back so that my first turn of dubbing comes around back here at the bend. And I'm going to work forward from there. You can see most of our taper is already built in. We can sort of fine tune it with the dubbing. But I'm really just going to work forward up to a couple eye lengths back from the hook eye to build that tapered abdomen. Once I'm there, I'm going to take my flash and pull it forward over the top and I'll bring my thread up and over it. And again, for the same reasons, I want to make sure that that's centered on top. And then I'll pull straight down on the thread to anchor it in place and cinch that with a few turns. So that flash should be right square over the top. Um, if you're going to air, put it a little bit to your uh, near side. Um, your, your rib here in a minute will, will offset that just a bit. So if you're a little bit to your near side, you're okay. I'm going to just trim this piece out so it's not hanging in our way while we're trying to see everything. So now the reason that I tied the mono rib in on the far side is I can come under the hook and up over on this near side and what that does for me is it allows me to fold that flash around the body rather than lift it up. If it was coming straight up from underneath, see how as I pull that over the top, um, that will cup the flash around the top of the body rather than lift it and peel the edge up. So I want to continue that, and I'm wrapping these wraps pretty tightly, and they get just slightly further apart as I come forward. And I like to let that mono bite down into the flash. It's 3x, so you can pull on it as hard as you like. I'll tie that off with a couple of turns, and then I can trim both the flash and the tinsel off, or both the flash and the, the mono off. A couple crazy ones in there. You can see our segmented shell back there. Alright, now we're going to build the thorax. And the thorax is going to be just another little pinch of dubbing, um, just over this tie-off, and it's going to buy us a little bit of room. Here at the front of the fly. And what I'm going to do with this dubbing is I'm going to build this up on to the front of the abdomen. And I really just build sort of a ball there. So really not much more than a hair's ear at this point. So now we get to the part that's going to make this fly different. We're going to use a CDC feather for a soft tackle collar. And what we want I should have picked this out before I got too started here. Something like this will work fine. What we want is a nice thick CDC feather. This is a tan colored one, tan or gold, um, even plain yellow will work fine on this fly. But I'm going to take this CDC feather and I'm going to create a separation point at the tip. And you can see I, this feather has a relatively thick stem, but the piece that I'm going to wrap up here at the tip end is pretty thin. So I don't worry about the butt end down here by my fingertips. Um, just the piece up here toward the, toward the tip. And I'm going to create a separation point there, like so. And then down here at the butt end, I'm just going to strip these fibers off so I've got bare stem. Like that. 
So just like a hackle feather, this is just the same way that you'd tie maybe a partridge feather in for a soft hackle fly. I'm going to tie this feather in with the inside of the feather toward the hook by the tip end, right at that division point. And I'm going to catch it with a few turns there. And where this tip goes, it's actually facing right at you. I'll turn that just a bit, you can see it. Uh, where that tip goes doesn't make a huge difference. I won't trim that till later if I even trim it. Um, sometimes it'll blend nicely into the collar and not even need to be trimmed. So now I'm going to grab the butt end of the feather in my hackle pliers. I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to wet my fingers just a bit. And I'm going to come in from the front. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to make an O, like an OK sign, around the feather. So I'm not actually touching the feather at this point. I'm going to slide the feather back between my fingers. And you can see as I kind of pull back, what I'm trying to do is fold this just like a wet fly style collar, where I've swept all those fibers to one side. Now once I've done that, I'm going to begin wrapping. And you can see I'll sort of sweep these fibers back after each turn. Now you're not going to ever get a bunch of turns with a CDC, CDC feather. Um, you're only going to get a couple. And you can see how those splay out nicely. And then I want to tie it off on this bare stem up here behind the bead. Get a couple good tight turns over it. And then I can come in and just trim that stem out. So you can see how lively, and get a couple on here, how lively that CDC collar is. Um, now you can see the tip there. I've got to turn him around my side. And I am going to trim him out just because he's a bit shorter. So I wanted to trim that center stem out. So I've just got the, the fluffy CDC fibers. Um, the length of these fibers shouldn't really extend past the tail, and in this case they don't. But if I had any that did, you can come in and just break them off with your fingernail. Don't, break, don't cut them off square. Don't grab them all in a bunch and cut them all square. Sort of treat them like marabou, and you can come in and just sort of shorten the long ones with your fingernails so that they're random and ragged. The coolest thing about CDC on a nymph um, versus a conventional soft tackle feather is it doesn't mat together like a regular soft tackle feather does. So it's very lively in the water. It's a, a very alive feather. Um, it seemed odd to me when I first heard of CDC nymphs. It didn't make sense to me either. Uh, but man, this fly does work and that CDC pheasant tail, CDC princes as well. So keep that in mind while you're twisting up some bugs for this season. Um, so now what I'm going to do, once I've got a couple of wraps on there, is I'm going to sweep these fibers back. And you can kind of come from the front end and push them back and then grab them, grab them and hold them in place. And I'm just going to take a couple turns in that thread neck area. You can see our little stem sticking out there. Just bought ourself a little bit of room. One of the things that I uh, don't love about CDC feathers is they're not very modeled. There's no uh, variegation to them. So what I decided to do when I was coming up with this fly was face this CDC feather with a grizzly hen feather. So what I'll do here is I'm going to pick out a Grizzly Hen Saddle Feather, and this one's dyed gold. And I don't need a very big one. I'm going to trim the butt end off. And then I'm going to come in and just trim a few barbs off of the base of the feather, off of each side. So I've got just these little stubs left, and that's going to help to anchor this feather. We're going to fold this just like we did the CDC feather. So those little stubs will help uh, keep us from pulling that out. So now I'm going to take this hen feather, and I'm going to tie it in the same way that I did the CDC feather. So I've got the inside toward the hook, and I want to anchor that down good and tight there. And I'll come in with my hackle pliers, and I'll grab the tip of the feather here. So I've got the inside of the feather facing backwards. Uh, the side that you're looking at there is the inside. And I'm going to wet my fingers again and start to sweep this feather back. Now, when, it, when you fold a feather, this is a hard thing to describe in writing, so I've been struggling this with, in bo with this in books for years. Um, but in practice, it's actually pretty easy to show. Um, what I'm doing is I close my fingers and I'm going to pull the feather forward through my closed fingertips. And you can see I'll kind of pull the feather down and let it slide out of my fingertips. And that will crease the fibers all back to one side. I don't really need the whole feather done here, but I want to show you what I'm after. And what I'll try to get here 
is those fibers shaped into a V so that they'll all sweep back. Now I'll begin to wrap this feather and again this is just a couple of turns and I'll sweep back after each turn just a couple turns and then I'll tie that feather off with vertical thread wraps. Now you saw my hackle pliers come off there uh, right after I had tied that off. That's because I'm a professional. Uh, they didn't come off before I had tied it off um, because karma has been good to me because I'm a good person and I've been being nice to everybody and sometimes those things pay off. Or maybe I was lucky. Could be either one of those things. So you see I've got a couple strands sticking out. I'm going to sweep those back the same way. I'm going to kind of push this all back and sweep this collar back in place. I want to keep it 360 degrees around the hook. And then again, just a few turns of thread to sort of anchor that all back in place, like so. And you can see that adds a nice variegation to the front of that CDC collar. Now to finish the fly off, I'm going to come in with just one more little tiny pinch of dubbing. I'm going to put this dubbing on the thread very thin. It doesn't take much here. We're just going to do kind of a little dubbed collar behind the bead. To cover that tie down. I'll sweep that hackle back. And I just want to dub right up to the back of the bead, kind of finish off the shape of the thorax. And then I'll come in with my whip finisher. And in the case of whip finishing behind a bead like this, I'm going to let the wraps just slide off the back of the bead, or down toward the back of the bead. And then as I cinch it down, you can see they'll creep down inside that dubbing. And I'll trim that thread out. And there is our finished CDC Golden Stone. Really a cool fly, fun fly to tie, fun fly to fish. Um, got a couple little extra long ones here. I'm just going to nip those off with my thumbnail. You can see that ragged effect of that CDC. It's very lively in the water. It's very wiggly. It never mats down. Uh, we got a nice flashy profile. And with that lead wrap and that big tungsten bead, this is a nice heavy fly. Um, really a beautiful fly too. I, I enjoy tying this one. Uh, looks great on that screen. Came out nicely today, so thank you for watching. If uh, you have questions, you know where to find us. Uh, it's also, as I said, featured in uh, the Tying Nymphs book. It's got a whole step-by-step -step tutorial there as well. I hope you enjoy it. Tie some up, take them out and fish them. Any place there's golden stones, which is darn near everywhere. The Colorado and Arkansas come to mind immediately. Uh, I've caught an awful lot of fish on this fly, and you should too. So twist some up and see what you think.